We're in a series called God's Three Deadlines. Everybody say God's Three Deadlines. Everybody else say God's Three Deadlines. So deadline number one, you can go back two weeks ago, it's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. The King James says blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Um, and that is, listen to me, that's, that's the unpardonable sin. There's one sin that God will not forgive. And it's not suicide. It's not adultery. It is the unpardonable sin. It is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. What is, what is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? That is when the Bible says that God is appointed to work with man at least once. At least once. That does not mean that God's going to work for you, work with you, work with you. But when God has worked with you for the last time, everybody say the last time. Here's where blasphemy comes in. When God has worked with you for the last time and you reject him, you say, no, I'm not getting saved. No, I'm not turning from my sin. I'm not doing it. When you do that, I prove to you guys, within 24 hours, you're a dead person. Bible. Not pastor, that's Bible. The second deadline is uh, sending away your day of grace. We talked about that. You can go back and look at that and hear that. And today, what I'm going to preach and teach about today is deadline number three. Everybody say deadline number three. Please, in Jesus Christ's name, lean in and listen to this pastor. Deadline number three is the sin unto death. The sin unto death. Now, church, listen to me. This is, this is some serious preaching. I probably think out of the 13 years I've been your pastor... This is probably the most serious set of sermons that I have ever done. Because here's the sad part. Some of you are getting ready to cross a deadline and you don't even know it. There is a sin unto death. There is a sin unto death. And when you cross, watch, when you cross this deadline, whether it's the first one, second, or third, when you cross this deadline, I'm telling you it's capital punishment. I'm telling you, I don't care if you're a Southern Baptist, Independent Baptist, Missionary Baptist, Pentecostal. Watch this. It don't impress me one bit. Because a dead, there's a reason why he calls it a deadline. When you step over that line, you're dead. Now listen, I'm not trying to scare you, but I'm preaching the Word of God. Because here's the deal. Listen to me. If you have not had a transformation in your life, you can come to church all your life. You can be a charter member. You can be baptized 10 times. I'm telling you, salvation equals transformation. If, watch, you can be here today and been in church all your life. That don't mean you're saved. Well, y'all, please, I'm telling you, I got an urgency in my spirit. My wife looked at me the other day and she said, Brian, you, you're preaching different. And I said, good. Good. Because I'm finally to the point, not because I'm 50, but because I really actually believe that the horn is getting ready to sound. And it's not Terry Eastrich over here. It's Gabriel on the trumpet. And I'm telling you, when this horn sounds, your decision has been made. So let me get to this. I want to preach this. I want to get this in your spirit. Deadline number three, the sin unto death. So if you have your Bibles, real quick, 1 John chapter 5, verse 16. I'm going New Testament, Old Testament. Watch this. You say, Brian, that's Old Testament. It's still a testament. 1 John chapter 5, verse 16. Ooh, I love y'all. Here we go. 1 John chapter 5, verse 16. Read now the KJV. So you know this one's right. I hear that all the time. Well, if it ain't King James, I'm not reading it. That's another lesson. 1 John chapter 5, verse 16, KJV says, listen, listen, so good. Y'all lean in. If any man, any man sees his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask. And he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. But watch this. There is a sin unto death. There is a sin unto death. There is a sin, hallelujah, unto death. And I do not say that he shall pray for it. Listen, what is the sin unto death? What is the sin? I made this personal. I didn't ask Pastor Joy this, but I know he's cool with this. What is the sin that Pastor Joy Hicks could commit that would lead him? He's a good man. One of the best men I know. But what is the sin that Pastor Joey Hicks could commit 
that would lead to capital punishment. What is the sin, let me bring this in, that your pastor, Pastor Brian Rafferty, could commit that would lead to capital punishment? Kill me. And then the Elkhorn Baptist Church would have to put together a search committee to elect a new lead pastor. What is the sin and the death that a deacon, a church member, a born-again person, saved person could commit that would lead to death? If y'all with me, say, I'm with you, Pastor. It's very serious. We, we've took church so, we've made church all about a, a, us, Americanized it. What is the sin that leads to death? I hear from you saying right now in my spirit, Brother Brian, is there really a sin that I can commit as a Christian, a child of God, a saved person that will kill me, <laughs> that, will, that leads to death, that has co the consequences of capital punishment? Lean in. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. There really is. There certainly is. And so what is it? So if y'all ready, I want to get down into this. Amos chapter 4. Amos chapter 4. Verse 6 through 12. And I know this is Old Testament, but it's still valuable today. It still works today. Amos chapter 4, verse 6 through 12. Holy Spirit, help me. If you have your Bible, I want y'all to turn. If you don't have your Bible, look, look at the big Bible. Amos chapter 4, verse 6 through 12. Whew, man. These sermons have been brewing in my spirit for 10 years. Ten years. I'm reading out of King James again. He says these words, Amos chapter 4, verse 6 through 12. If you're there, say amen. amen. Here it is. And I also have given you cleanliness of teeth in all your cities. And one of bread in all your places. Yet, ye have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. And I have also withholden the rain from you. When there was yet three months to the harvest... I caused it to rain upon the city and caused it not to rain upon the other cities. Can y'all imagine? God says, I know Campbellsville, Kentucky needs a harvest. It's going to rain over here, but it's not going to rain over there. God says, I did that for you. Watch this. One place was rained upon, the peace were upon it rained, it not withered. Verse 8. So two or three cities wandered into the city, one city, to drink the water. But they were not satisfied. Oh, my God, my God. Help me preach, Holy Ghost. Yet you have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have smitten you. Watch. With blasting and with mildew. When your gar gardens and your, your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees, they increased. The palmer worm devoured them. Yet you have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Your young men I have slain with the sword. I have taken away your horses. I have made the, the shrink in your camps to come up in the nostrils. Watch this. Yet you have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have overthrown some of you. As God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Y'all better listen and lean in this, pastor. And you, listen, you were firebrand plucked out of the burning. I saved you. Yet you have not returned unto me. Therefore, this I will do unto thee, O Israel. And because I will do this unto thee, watch what he says, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. Five times. Everybody say five times. Five times God said these words. This means something to me. You know, when God says it once, <laughs> that's powerful. But when God <laughs> says these words five times yet, you have not returned unto me. Yet 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 you have not returned unto me. Listen to what God says. This is, this is, if I've ever seen the 21st century church, if I've ever seen the church of Laodicea, if I've ever seen the Bible Belt, if I've ever seen Camelsville, Kentucky, if I've ever seen a time of the church today, Listen, God says, I have allowed famine. And you would not come back to me. God says, I've allowed a drought. And you would not come back to me. I've allowed pestilence. And you would not come back to me. I have allowed a war. But you would not come back to me. 
I have allowed destruction. This is God speaking. And you have not, you will not come back to me. Can I go deeper just for a moment? Can I, go, can I get really Elkhorn style right here just for a moment? God says, I have allowed a 9-11. And you have not come back unto me. I have allowed sickness in your body. I've, I've allowed this stuff. And you have not come back to me. I Watch, I'm going to mess you good about this stuff. I have allowed COVID-19. But you have not come back unto me. Here's the scariest thing about COVID. If Elkhorn Baptist Church remains the same, we didn't learn a thing. If we get back in the same old little ruts, same old little traditions, same old little things, and we did not learn anything through the sickness of COVID that has killed people and lost people, if we have not learned anything through this, you we have not yet returned unto him. Boy, can I break this down? I need you guys to lean and listen to me. Listen, sin. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. I'm all, listen. Sin grieves God. Everybody say, sin grieves God. The rest of you say, sin grieves God. Everybody say, this sin hinders God. Everybody say, this sin separates you from God. Everybody say this, God hates sin. Hmm. People ask me this question all the time, and I'm going to get to answer it in front of thousands of people today. Why does God... Allow sickness. Why does God allow pain? Why, why does God allow death? This is tough. Why does God allow a 9-11? Why does God allow all this stuff that's happening in our world? Why does God allow it? And I've got an answer for every one of you and those watching by Facebook today. Here's why. God will allow whatever it takes Whatever it takes for his church and his children and this nation to come back to him. He will allow whatever. Listen to me. He loves us this much. He loves us this much. God is in heaven. I'm sitting there going, why, why can't people see? Why can't people give God praise? Could you imagine if God himself took his hand off Elkhorn? Could you imagine what it would be like in this house? Could you imagine, Daddy, if God were to take his hand off of you? Mama, could you imagine what it would be if God himself took his hand off your life? We as Americans are spoiled, stinking, rotten. We need Jesus. We need a Savior. We need a touch of God again. We've made church. We've made Elkhorn. We've made work. We've made everything about us. And it don't have anything to do with us. It's all about Jesus Christ. We know that. It's all about Jesus. It's all about why would God allow a drought, pestilence, war? Why would God do that? I thought God loved me. He loves you so much to allow it in your life, hopefully to change your heart. God, all God's wanting from me and you today, think about this. He's not asking a lot. He just says, drop the little G's in your life. Drop the little gods in your life and worship the one true king, Jesus Christ. Every one of us should be at the altar. Every one of us should be praying. Every one of us. We shouldn't have to wait to a sickness, a tragedy, a 9-11, something comes along in our life to drive us to our knees. What if we did like Job did? What if we did what Job did? The Bible says every morning Job got up and prayed for his ten children. Well, Brian, they were good. Everything was going. No, listen to me. I think Job knew something. He knew if I serve God, the devil hates that. If I give God my praise, the devil is going to, it's going to cost me something. Listen, your worship today should cost you something. It's more than church attendance. Please say, I, I understand that, Pastor. It's more than you walking through these doors and sitting in a comfortable chair. It's more than that. I never thought I'd have to preach a sermon to Christians about a sin unto death. We act like we're going to do what we want to do and say what we want to say. But I'm going to tell you something. God is holy. God is holy. And there is a sin unto death. God will allow, watch, whatever, whatever. I say whatever. Come on, don't, don't tune me out. 
Because here's what the devil's going to do right now. He's going to cause distractions. He, he's, gonna, he's wanting you to sit there and say, I'm good, but you already, know, you already see my neighbor. My neighbor is bad, Brian. Sir, I'm talking to you. Pastor, I'm talking to you. You do not get away with sin. Do y'all, do y'all, I know I'm at a Southern Baptist church. I, I believe in eternal security of the believer. If, if you're a believer. If you truly have been saved and truly converted, sin will mess you up. You can't sin comfortably. Come on, church, somebody help me today. You, you can't just hurt people and sin and be ugly and nasty and cuss and tell dirty jokes and live like an adulterer and a fornicator. I know I'm preaching hard today, but we better wake up in this church. Think about this. I feel the Holy Ghost. Amos 4.12. The children of Israel. God's chosen people. Everybody say that God's chosen people. I'm talking to Israel right now. And God told his chosen people. We Americans, by golly. We chew tobacco, chew tobacco, spit. God's all up on America. Well, we're free. We worship. He's talking to Israel. Drew, he's talking to his chosen people. And watch what he says for Israel, verse 12. For Israel to prepare to meet the Lord. And I'm going to say something. What is, what is the sin unto death? It's going to mess you up. Because we all got something. I'm talking to everybody today. I'm talking to pastors. I'm talking to associate pastors. I'm talking to deacons. I'm talking to church members. I'm t- this is probably one of the most serious sermons I've ever birthed out of, God's ever birthed out of my spirit. I'm talking to every person under my voice today who claims to be a Christian. Woo. Why did God tell Israel, his chosen people, you better prepare to meet me? Because what you're doing, it's going to kill you. It's a deadline. It's a sin unto death. Y'all know what it was? I'm going to prove it. You know what it was? <laughs> Israel had hidden sin in her life. She had hidden, boy, you could hear a church mouse now. Hidden sin. Hidden sin. So what is the sin unto death? Listen to me. It's that little hidden sin that you have deep, watch, deep, deep, deep down in your heart that only you and God know about. Your wife may not know about this sin. Oh, preach that, preach that. Your husband may not know about this sin. Your best friend may not know about this sin. But watch. You know it, and God knows it. You know it, and God knows it. I love y'all. Listen to me. I'm going to preach hard. I love y'all enough to tell you truth. The Bible says, reach down and rescue them out of hell while there's still breath in their lungs. I'm going to hell today for you. I'm going to battle in the Holy Ghost for y'all today. It's serious stuff. It's serious stuff. There is a sin unto death. And what is that sin? It's that little bitty sin that has drove you crazy pretty much all your life. And you not dealt with it. Now you have compromised your lifestyle. Everybody else is doing it. Every other teenager is doing it. I'm going to do it. Nobody else is holy. I'm going to give myself away. Everybody else is smoking dope and everybody else is doing this. Everybody else, watch me. There should be a difference in our lives. When people look at me, and I know this is old school preaching, but sometimes you've got to go back because we've lost it. When's the last time you've had a watch? Not just a little conviction. I'm talking about a, a, a Holy Ghost conviction. A Holy Ghost conviction. I'm talking a Holy Ghost. I'm broken. I should have never done this. God, forgive me. Not because you don't pull over because the cops are behind you. You pull over because you're guilty. You've done something. 
Ah. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Here's what I'm saying. Y'all with me? I'm going to call the praise team up here because I feel a cold wave. Here's what, here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. If, if that hidden sin is not taken care of, some of you are under my teaching today and you've got unforgiveness in your heart. You've had unforgiveness in your heart for 15, 20, 30 years. Get rid of that. Why, why I feel the Holy Ghost. That sin of unforgiveness is a cancer growing in your body and you don't even know that there's chemo available for you to hook you up to a Holy Ghost IV and to set you free here today. That's what I'm saying. Get rid of that junk in your life. Listen, I'm telling you, this is b Ralph. This is my sermon. This is what God gave me, and this is what I'm going to preach. I've got one sin in my life that has drove me nuts. One. It happened when I was 14 years old. I still deal with it today. But you know what I do every day, Joy? I confess it. I get it right with God. I don't pack it. I don't pack it. I let it go. I let it go. Some of your marriages are in bonds and shackles and chains. It's because you've got unforgiveness in your heart. I'm calling it out today. Y'all already mad at me anyway. Let's just go ahead and get her done. Isn't it mad? Christians will get mad at you for preaching the Bible. It's crazy. Trying to set the captives free. Well, that preacher, I'll tell you what. He crossed the line tonight, by golly. No, you're getting ready to cross a deadline. And I'm here to rescue you today. I'm here to tell y'all that we got a God that I'm telling you put his son Jesus Christ on a cross. He just didn't nail him there for yesterday. He nailed him there for the day, tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Somebody give God praise. He loves us. You got to get rid of that junk in your trunk. All right, all right. Let me, let me, let me give you a Bible. Here's what I'm saying. If that hidden sin isn't taken care of, and if you don't repent of that sin and turn from that sin, that sin will eventually kill you. Well, I never thought I'd preach this at a Southern Baptist church. I thought everybody's saved. Can I get any plainer than that? If you're committing adultery, stop. If you're swinging, stop. If you're lying and gossiping and slandering, stop. I'm taking authority over this stuff today. And if y'all don't want a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled church, there's the door. You need to let God wake us up, Holy Ghost. We need to be holy. We need to be pure. We need to be set aside in the name of Jesus. When people look at us, they should see two things. Salt and light. Salt and light. Salt and light. All right. Let's do this then. Are y'all okay? Everybody good? I, th I thought I, I think I'm all right at the right church. So what is the sin and the death? I'm going to give you some scripture. And you better check your heart. You better check your pulse. <laughs> because I didn't say this when I'm getting ready to read you. I agree with it. It's hard. But I think there's going to be a lot of people that really think they're saved. Going to go to heaven. And when Jesus Christ, when God himself, see God, God's, see something. God opened up the earth and swallow your rear end. Now, Jesus is all about that grace. He's over there pleading the blood of God. That's my child. Don't do this and that and the other. And he's all about that grace, all about that grace, all about that grace. But there's going to come a time God's going to say, I'm done. Could be today. Y'all hear me? It could. I know. He says, I'm looking at some of y'all. Y'all like, where am I at? My God, I should have picked another Sunday. No, you're, 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 right. you're here for a reason. You're here for a reason. There is a sin unto death. Let's talk about it. Galatians chapter 5. Listen to me. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. There is a sin unto death. There is a sin unto death. Do y'all hear this, Pastor? There is a sin. I didn't say it. First John said it. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21. This is some tough stuff but it needs to be preached 
Here it is, Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21. Casey's got it up on the big screen too. The acts of the flesh are obvious. <laughs> you ain't kidding. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Look, sexual immorality. Impurities. Tabakery. Adultery. Witchcraft, which is rebellion. Hatred. Christians should never say, I hate you. Discord. There should never be a Christian causing discord in the church. Jealousy. Are y'all with me? Fits of rage. Well, that's just who I am. <laughs> I just got some scripture. Selfish. Ambition. Dissensions. Fractions. Envy. Drunkenness. Uh-oh. Orgies. There it is again. Orgies and, and the like. Anything dealing with sex outside your marriage. Here it is. I didn't, Jimmy, I didn't write this, but it, this has got to be preached. And this is why I believe it took 10 years because I was probably disobedient. Because I didn't want to preach this stuff. But I feel that there's an urgency in this last hour that this stuff needs to be heard by the church. The church, I warn you, this, this is God now not talking to Israel. Uh-oh. This is God now talking to the Gentiles. This is God now not just saying, Israel, you got to stop this. Now he's talking to Gentiles, me and you. He says, I warn you as I did before. Let's go back to the Old Testament. I've already warned you. Like I did before. Watch what he says. That those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Will, is that truth? Let's read it again. Because I want this. This is me. We all today. Every 100% should be at this altar begging God. Lord, forgive me. I've had fits of rage in my life. God, forgive me. I've been jealous. God, forgive me. I repent of my sins. God, I've given myself away. God, forgive me. Watch. I'm going to read it again. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, tobacco,ry adultery, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, fractions, Envy, drunkenness, orgies, and all these alike. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this, those who live like this, those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Period. Praise team, you guys come. I'm getting out of here. The Bible says, if you have any, listen to me. Any of these fleshly sins in your life, any of them, you name them, you, you name them, you name them. Whew, man, I feel. He said, if you don't repent, that's the key. If it don't bother you, if you're living like this, and you don't have no conviction in your life, is the reason you don't have a convictor in your life. If you can sin comfortably, if you can sin comfortably, and something in you, man, that's wrong. God, I, I can't do that. Lord, I don't need to live like that. And if it don't bother you, and you don't have that small, still voice inside of you sitting there going, man, I got to turn from that. I, I, I can't live like this no longer. That's why I love the healing place. Everybody knows they're from the healing place. But you know what? We all need to go to the healing place. I praise God because here's the deal. Some of you walked in and said, man, Brian, I struggle with alcohol. And I always ask them, did you repent? Have you repented of your sins? Yeah, but I did it again. Have you repented again? Yeah, but I did it the third time. Have you repented for the third time? Whew. 
God says, if, listen, listen, I, listen. God says, if you're living like this, and you do not repent of your sins, I can't get no plainer to y'all. It's so simple. If you live like, if I, if I commit adultery on my wife, Not only does that hurt my marriage, it hurts y'all. Sin will transfer. It will transfer. It'll transfer. So don't act like you can be a member of a church and live like hell and it not affect the church. I know this is tough, man, golly. <laughs> I'm going to run home. Travis Begley, run, help me. Well, I don't live in the house up there no more, so I'm driving home. time. America, Elkhorn Baptist Church, praise team, I'm talking to every one of y'all. Pastor, deacon, youth, and y'all can look at me sideways. I'm telling y'all truth today. You cannot live like that and die and go to heaven. I didn't say it. God did. Terry, we got to get holy again. We got to clean that junk up inside of our life. We got to repent of our sins. I pray y'all have to lay the instruments down today and get on this altar and make God feel the presence of this place. We need a good, old fashioned, Holy Ghost, Spirit filled conviction back into church today. You cannot live like that. Can you do it? Here's the first sign. If you're mad today, God's talking to you. It's not the pastor. Y'all got to trust me that I mean, I've studied this. I backed it up with scripture. It said, thus saith the Lord word. He said it five times. You did not return to me. 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 You did not be because you did not repent. And because you did not turn back to me. You better get your house in order because you're getting ready to meet the Lord. America will destruct America by herself. It will not take a Muslim country. Come on, y'all. I heard Pastor Jensen Franklin last night. I cried my eyes out. He had a baptism at his church. I love this green. He held his hand up. He said, uh, I got a ring on. He said, but that don't mean I'm, I'm married. And he had his baptistry filled up. And he said, you know, some of you are getting ready to be baptized, but that don't mean you're saved. What means you're saved is the fruit of the Spirit that's coming through your life, the evidence of God working in you. I can take this ring off. And I guarantee you people will still know I'm married to Dana Michelle Rafferty. Your identity in Christ should echo heaven in your life. How many of y'all messed up? I I've messed up. Here it is. You ready? Have you repented? Have you repented? Sinner, I'm calling you home. Church, I, I'm calling y'all home. I'm asking y'all today to do a self-inventory of your heart. Here's what God told me, Mark. So how do you commit blasphemy against the Holy Ghost? I got to answer this. It's so good. How do... If you're saved, you cannot commit blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Because you're born again, saved. You ain't going to reject God. You've already got God. How does somebody commit blasphemy against the Holy Ghost? Y'all ready? Their tongue. Listen to this. How do you send away your day of grace? Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. You harden your heart. It goes from your tongue to your heart. Watch this. You become hard-hearted. I see a lot of hard-hearted Christians. They've been hurt. 
they got unforgiveness. What's happened is went from their tongue to their heart. The Bible says you've become, you stiffen your neck. That's good King James. How do you commit the sin unto death? What I'm talking about. Here it is, y'all. I'm done. How do you commit the sin unto death? You have a little sin, a big sin in your heart, and you refuse to repent. You refuse to repent. You refuse to repent. It goes from your tongue to your heart. And then the next thing you know, you're far away from God. And you refuse to come back home. That's a deadline. That's a deadline. That's a deadline. And today, may we be able to look down and say, God, I'm pretty close to that deadline. And I'm moving back from it. I'm getting away from it. I'm not going to have no more unforgiveness in my heart. I'm not going to be mean to people no more. I'm going to repent every second of my life for for the sins I've got in it. So, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I've done what you've told me to do. And God, you already know who's going to be at this altar and who's not. God, you know if they've heard it, if they didn't. You know. But God, I have done what you have asked me to do. God, this is some serious stuff. Serious. So, Lord, right now, save somebody. Yeah. Lord, deliver somebody. God, set somebody free in this place. Lord, let them get that sin out of their life. Let them turn back to you. God, may we all repent and get things right with you. In Jesus' name I pray. This altar's open. This altar's open. And I'm asking, I'm begging you to check your heart check your heart do a spiritual inventory of your life where are you at church God says I have allowed things in your life to come into your life and you've not turned back to me so today from from the altar to the back door I'm asking you today to get things right with Jesus Christ not for me because the Bible says if you don't that's a deadline And if you're here today, or you're watching online, you still have time. Watch me. You still have time to make it right with Jesus Christ. Church, I wrote this in my notes. How many of y'all know time is running out? Oh, yeah. Time is running out. And I beg you, watch. I wrote this in my notes. I beg you, before you cross the eternal deadline, before you cross the eternal deadline, make sure your heart is right with Jesus Christ. So Father God, bless these people. In Jesus' name, have your way. And all God's people said, this service is for you, sir. Ma'am, this service is for you. From this side all the way over, from front to back, top to bottom, listen for the Lord right now. Sir, you know that hidden sin. Ma'am, you know that hidden sin. And God says, repent of it. Make it right. And you'll be forgiven in Jesus' name. Come on. If you would, everybody stand in this place. There's a deadline. There's a deadline. God touches all. save somebody in this place today. I know your word's not going to come back void. God save that person online today that's watching. Lord, save that marriage.
need a Savior, you come on down here. I'll lead you to Jesus. I'll help you get back home. God loves you. Woo. Repent of that sin and come back to Jesus. You will, you will, you will do me this Thank you, Lord. Touch your people, God. Oh, God, pierce our hearts. Convict our spirits, God. Lord, we love you in this place. We need you, God. Oh, God, touch us. Oh, God, we need to cry out to you. Oh, God, we love you. say a prayer I want y'all to listen to me please I believe in my heart with all that I am standing here before you today but you guys are at the right place I just don't know why a Christian would not repent could it be because I'm not a Christian. So I'm going to say a prayer. I said this prayer when I was seven years old. I need y'all to listen to me. I need, I listen to me. I'm taking authority today. Because that person sitting beside you, in front of you, or behind you may not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And what if you were such a distraction, they missed it? So I'm going to say a prayer while God is working in this house. If you want a Savior, I want you to say this prayer. Or listen to me. If you're backslidden, I believe that's America. I believe we have backslidden so far we can't even feel the presence of God anymore. God can show up and we're sitting there going, what happened? So I'm going to say a prayer. And if you want this Jesus Christ to be your Lord... Not just your Savior, your Lord. He owns you. I want you to say this prayer. You ready? Say, dear Lord, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that God raised him from the dead. And I confess 
that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, save me right now. God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, save me right now. Come into my heart. Hallelujah. Come into my life. Come into my soul and save me right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Did anybody at all say, Pastor, I said that prayer. I'm not going to, listen, I'm not going to embarrass you, but I just want to see your hand. If you said today, I said, hey, man, hallelujah. Anybody else say that prayer? Come on. Come on. Anybody else say that prayer? Woo, thank God. Come on. Let's give God a high, high praise in here today. I'm going to ask those who raised their hand for Pastor Drew and Pastor Joy. They're right up front. On the count of three, I'm going to ask you, man of God, woman of God, to get out of your seat, to walk this aisle and come to one of these paths. You ready? One. Two. Three. Amen. God bless you. Woo! God, we praise you. Y'all didn't think y'all was going to get away with it, did you? I'm going to call the backslider home. I wrestled with this, and I wrestled with this, and I wrestled with this. Oh, Satan was over going, it's none of your business. It's none of your business. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. And that was just a, a clue or an indication I was doing the right thing because... So I don't know where y'all... I don't know where this section's at. I don't know where this section's at. I don't know where this section's at, or I don't know where this section's at, but here's what I do know. Listen to me. How many of y'all want revival? Be honest with me. Come on. How many of y'all truly believe that Jesus Christ could come back today? I want to see your hand. If you really believe, now I'm asking everybody, 100%, to come to this altar. If you've got sin in your life, I highly advise you to make it right. I, listen, I, I'll take I'll take a licking on this one, but I'll take it. I'm calling the backsliders home. I'm calling the prodigals home. I'm calling the people that right now you're under my teaching and you can't even feel the Holy Ghost. I'm calling you back to this place. I'm asking you to stand up and let God stand up inside of you. I'm asking this church to turn from her evil ways. I'm asking us to repent of all of our sin. Every one of them. Every one of them. Every one of them. So you know what y'all going to have to do today? You're going to have to follow your pastor to the altar. Because when I talked about this stuff... Every one of us in here today need to be at this altar saying, God, I need to love you more. Come on, y'all. So uh, all y'all, y'all love God to the max, boy. I mean, y'all are good. Now, everybody got everything. Y'all are good. I'm preaching to the wrong crowd. Ron, you're just trying to convict me. No, it ain't my job. My job is to preach the word of God. There's somebody called the Holy Ghost. And if your heart is sitting there pumping, oh God, oh God, that's called the Holy Spirit. He's given you another chance. And I highly advise, if your heart is beating hard and you feel something inside of you, make it right. Elkhorn, come home. You got to move. You got to move. So in Jesus' name, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God, I have done what you've told me to do. I commission this people, this church, into your hands. Have your way. And God, I'm going to meet you at the altar today. In Jesus' name. Praise the Y'all good?
Jesus, forgive us, God. Lord, forgive us of all of our evil ways, God. Lord, today we turn back to you, God. Today, God, we repent of our sins. God, we need you. We need the touch of heaven upon our life. God, forgive us, God. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, God. Oh, God, forgive us. Oh, God, forgive me. Oh, God, forgive us. Bless these people. Bless this church, God. May we truly repent of our sins, God. Turn from our evil ways. Acknowledge you as God. And the Bible says, then you'll heal our nation. God is waiting on America. God is waiting on you. God is waiting on me. So in Jesus' name, let's have some church. In Jesus' name, let's repent.